our scars, our, our wounds, our experiences, our mile markers in our lives. They mark chapters in our lives for us. There are other scars hidden from human view, scars from verbal abuse, divorce, traumatic loss, betrayal, especially by those that you expected to love you. The wonderful thing about all that is even those wounds do not escape the gaze of the master. This past week, I finally had to break down and go in and see a knee doctor. But why didn't you go sooner? The last time I had to go see a knee doctor, we were actually traveling out of town. I didn't think nothing of it, no big deal. Let's go and see. And they want, they said, well, we need to give you an injection in your knee. We need the drains to do this. Well, when they went to do it, you know, I, I've actually filmed and watch surgeries done on me. I'm not the bravest and strongest, but I'm also not at the other end of the spectrum either. You know, I'm pretty just an average guy. I've actually filmed them. I got a film on, some of you have seen it, where they stick a needle in me and give me an injection and pull it out and blood comes flowing. It don't bother me. But this time, Erica was actually filming. And I was like, okay. And this guy sticks this 20-foot needle, not really, but it felt like one. And as he's sticking to my needle, there's an audible pop, and I feel it. And thank God for the Holy Ghost, because I was coming up to grab the guy. I was, I was ready. In fact, I was looking at him, and before he actually completed, he went ahead and yanked that thing out and got away, because I think he saw I was at my limit. So as I went in this week, I went in with that being my freshest experience. And so they did the x-rays, they looked at it, they come, we want to do this. And I'm like, yanks at the scar, the, the memory, the pain, everything. And I looked at him and I was like, is there another way? Is there anything else? Is there not something else that, that no, 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 we need to do this. And so, you know ripping a hold of the, the medical table and my legs hanging over the side and they mark it and they do that cold stuff and they go in and okay. I could have filmed it. The reason I didn't film it is because if I had the pain this time as I did last time, I probably would have crushed my phone and grabbed somebody. I thought something. But it was nothing. But yet I suffered as if it was a repeat suffered and I, I was almost not willing to allow them to help me because of past experiences. I, 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 I was, I had emotional unseen scars that were wanting to resist healing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We have emotional, relational wounds. We have Wounds in our spirit. We jump up for joy if we watch someone get healing. I've seen healings. I've seen people with broken backs get up and run. I've seen, and we, oh man, I've seen a finger grow back, and I've seen this, and people brag, and they talk about seeing that. But I'll be honest with you. It's those unseen. Those wounds deep down inside of some people. Even get close. That cause more pain and all that we can see healing for those. One of the greatest tells of weakness is when someone feigns strength. In the fight world, if you're ever in a fight and you connect and they laugh and they act like it was nothing, oh no. It hurt them. The opposite of what they're telegraphing you is what did. They're hurt. It's a tell. You act, oh, that was nothing. Well, then why did you have to say anything? That's what's up. People have tells, even in the church. I 
refusal to come to the altar is a very, very clear present evidence. There's a serious hurt there. There's a wound there. The stagnation of standing while God is doing a great move is a very, they're not strong. They're very weak and you're touching the sensitive subject that has caused them. Not only have I seen it done, but I've watched it at many altar calls. I've been a partaker of the very same tactic. How do we cope with life when our spirits are so? How do we deal with the fact that you're revealing the fact that we have wounds in here? How can we handle that? When that part of us is the very source of our energy and strength is wounded and it won't heal. How can I? Sister Crow was trying desperately to lead us in worship. The hindrance wasn't God's enthusiasm to help, but our lack of trust. Hindered worship is a tell that hiding a weakness. Oh, this isn't moving. Oh, how can the presence of God not move and touch? You're getting too close. That hurt last time. It's not an isolated story that I read to you this morning. It's everywhere in the Bible. Because wounded and hurting people are everywhere. In fact, if you look around the room, it's impossible that you won't spot. So looking at this man's story this morning, this person who Jesus decided was going to hear his story of his wounds, He's a poor guy sitting at a pool and he's been there for 38 years. Now, if we'd simply read through this story, we could simplify it and say, well, it's a story of a physical healing, but it was so much more than that. We try to blow it off and say, oh, no, he just needed a physical healing, but there was a wounded spirit involved. Proverbs 18 and 14 says, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit, who can bear? Mm -hmm. One version says, the human spirit can endure sickness, but a crushed spirit, who can bear? So can we really just relegate some of the things we've gone through, some of the things we face, some of the things we deal with in our homes, in our families, in our lives, in our emotions, in our hearts, in our minds? Well... I just need to get better. I do believe there's some things we can learn from the story. I get it. He's been sick, ill for 38 years. And for many of those years, he's been brought to this pool beside the sheep gate. The northern side of the temple of Jerusalem is a, a special place, a well-known place. So much so that a multitude was there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It was here that this man, along with many others, waited for one purpose. All that we would come into the house of God with that same purpose. But sadly, we come here with the very intention of, okay, just like I am. The scripture says that at certain times, the water of this pool would be stirred by an angelic visitation and that the first one to enter the troubled waters would be physically healed. Pretty good reason to hang about. I think it's safe to assume that the people who brought him back and forth to the pool would also have put him as close to the edge of the pool as possible to increase his chances of receiving his healing. He could never seem to be the first one in. He literally says, people stepped over me. People passed me by. I've been walked on. 
I put in years of effort. But still, he came every day, every month, every year. Hoping. I don't know what kind of hope that is. Carol, that grips my mind. How, oh, that, you know, I'm a pretty animated thinking person. I'm, I'm kind of descriptive in, in how I think. I'm like 38 years faithful every day, hoping for one thing. And, well, that's faith. I wonder if there was a side of him that maybe the next time some joker tried to step over him, he could reach up with his hand and get shoved in out of pure co Maybe I can just get it by default. You know? Maybe if as he's falling in, I get in there just that moment. No. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm going to try to get in there. He was known as an invalid and an amazingly unlucky one at that. Pessed over, stepped over. I wonder if he'd been there so long that maybe he had incurred some seniority. But time after time, someone else would beat him to the water. If he would watch the very thing he needed, the very thing he wanted more than anything else in the world, someone else would take home 30 minutes. to be faithful for that long. He had to have seen a good reason to keep coming. As wounded as he probably got watching some other paraplegic or wounded person make it in, and all of a sudden they come bursting out of the water a restored leg or arm or face or whatever, and watching them. Imagine the healings he'd probably seen. Eight years. 30, how many of you seen 38 healings? Can you imagine? Change lives. The, the, the joyous. The invalid pops out of the water and steps out, and all of a sudden. You can't run like he could, Brother Bruce. You couldn't dance and shout like that guy. All of a sudden, he made James Brown look like a stick in the mud. So all of a sudden, he could run, he could talk, he could laugh or whatever it was that he needed. There just had to be an explosion of joy. How many times he's seen that, watched that. He knew the power of God was real. He knew. The day in and day out, the most important, important thing that he does is be there. It works. Before his very eyes, he's watched it. He's seen it. And no doubt in the beginning, he probably laughed with him, was happy with him, was excited with him, probably saw him, I don't know, a week later, a month later, for those the following years, hey, I'm going to be next. I hope you are. I hope you are. Hey, I got to go back. I got a wife and kids now. Watching people's lives go by that he used to share the porch with.
watching someone step out of the pool to walk away. Never happen. them every now and then in their new life. Maybe even now and then the eyes of those familiar with And words would pass in an instant. One face of life and joy. The other hope, pleading, emotional. Do you think? That after witnessing all this, there might have been some emotional wounds that this guy needed healing after 30, maybe more than just the physical ailment that maybe now at this point, uh, when he got in there, there was going to need to be some emotional healing to take place. I believe the evidence would, would clearly indicate that if you look closely, the truth of the matter, the fact of the matter, the physical condition he had was not nearly as crippling. With all those years of watching others get healed, that sense of helplessness had to grow. His feelings of being abandoned and not even having a friend close enough to say, I'm going to sit with you so that you can't get in next time. Not even having a good enough friend after 38 years saying, you know what, you're not going to know one more time not making it in. I'm going to stay with you day in and day out until you get your healing. I'm going to stick with you. I'm going to stick by you. My Lord, you've been here for 30 years. You've been here 29 years. You've been here 31 years. Whatever it was, I'm going to stay with my friend to make sure he didn't even have a friend willing to stand in after all those years. How many people did he know that he, over the years he had spent all that time talking to that slipped in just before him that he'd had conversations for 20 years with? That knew what he had to overcome, that wouldn't hang around and come back to get him in next time. How well would you be able to think for yourself at that point, dealing with those kind of scars? Would you be inclined to think that maybe God had it in for you? You ever think that right now, all this aside, that maybe if you've gone through something, you think God had it in for you? God, are you punishing me? Well, stop for a minute. What else did he have to think about? He didn't have to worry about what kind of transmission he needed. He didn't have to worry about getting over to pick up his dry cleaning. He wasn't going to run down there to Walmart and get enough, you know? What else is he going to do but think all day? What else is he going to think about while he's watching everybody else get healed? What, what else is he going to do if he continues to sit and think and wait and dwell on the, his condition? Here's a man with all kinds of wounds, not just crippling but emotional, sensitive wounds and almost 40 years of pain. But as I read, one day, something different happens. He gets a visit from Jesus. Now, the scripture doesn't specify, but I'm pretty sure that this... Uh, Crippled men had heard about Jesus at some point. In fact, the Bible talks about it, mentions it twice that what Jesus was doing was noised abroad. People were talking, news had spread, crowds had gathered. Are you hearing me? Things had been done, things had been seen, and I'm pretty sure, just like today, the gossip and the skinny, the news, whatever it is you're looking for. I'm pretty confident that the news had spread to the place where all they could do was 
lay around and discuss current events. Hey, you hear about this guy got healed over there? You hear about those leper? Did you hear about? I've been sitting by this pool for 30 years, 37 years. I mean, you hear some hear about this lady with the issue. Did you, did you hear about this guy's daughter getting raped? Did you hear? Can you imagine you're you're stuck around this pool and then you realize miracles are popping up? Mm, 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 mm. I don't know what kind of cranial activity goes on in your head, what's going on in this guy's head, but all of a sudden when you start hearing a commotion and you start realizing the one everybody's talking about healing people is walking your direction. I'm pretty sure that this guy that's probably become very good at thinking, what else could he do? Maybe some of us could take a note there. Right here by the pool. All I gotta do is be the first one in and yet he hears that Jesus is going for back amongst all the crippled folks in the five porches. He's right here, right now. And finally, Jesus, the healer, comes to a place where the sick are actually seeking healing. It is a, it, it is a collision course of epic proportions. Wait a minute here, hold on. What does Jesus do? Because Jesus has been doing some thinking as well. And I believe he asked the question. He's asking you today. What do you want? What do you want? Do you want to be healed? Almost sounds like a, a no-brainer, obviously. Right? Is the sky blue? Is grass green? Is dirt brown? Uh, water wet? Uh, yeah! But do we really want to be made whole today? That seems about as crazy a question as any question that could be asked. But remember, Jesus is dealing, this is where we need to understand something, a whole person. He's dealing with a whole person. You listen in online and everyone you say, he's not just worried about your toe, your sore knee, your finances, your family, he's worried about every little bit about you. Mm. Some of you don't realize Jesus is in this for all of you. <laughs> and not just the broken part. Do you understand what's going on here? It's, it's, it's bigger than a stirred pool it's the whole life that he's dealing with. The question was not for Jesus to get some information. The question was for the sick man. Because some of you sit here and on the outside you look whole. But God knows better. And some of you are so good at acting like you're whole and God looks at you. You're undone. The question points to the fact that just possibly the man had considered the situation, but maybe Jesus wanted to seriously know if he really wanted to be made whole and healed. 
I believe our, our, our God's a sensitive God and understanding God, and Jesus knows that old wounds are tender to the touch. I know this because some of us would rather pretend than actually come forward and get well. We deny our hurts rather than have them handled. That's what's scary about a message like this. Is you know, I'm good. No, you're not. You're just afraid that, that you get touched this time, it's going to hurt like last time, and you don't want them to to do to your knee like so we deny our hurts we don't need an altar i don't need to come forward i'm i'm beyond all that. they'll deny it even in the face of the one that can heal them so the man answered but not the question jesus asked he responded by explaining his terrible situation isn't that what we do we don't answer the question. We talk about the situation. Isn't that what some of our lives have turned into? Our life is a situation. <laughs> it's our way we rationalize really not trusting and giving ourselves to God. Because if I go to the altar again, I've been going to the altar for 20 years. I've been going to the altar for 10 years. I haven't got my healing yet. And yet God's got a guy here that sat around the pool for 38 years and he's still showing up day in and day out. And Jesus still walked up and asked a question that he's asking some of you to, do you want healed now? Are you done with this? Are you ready to quit acting like you're well and come forward and get healed? See, because you have to understand that, that, yeah, many folks have hurt but they want to blame the hurts on someone or something and not focus on, that don't matter, I just want healed. Oh, Lord. Sir, the man said, Jesus, I don't have anybody to help me into the pool after the angel stirs the water. Somebody else always beats me there. Who do they think they are? Only the first one is healed. There's so many things. There's so much wrong here, Jesus. I'm in a predicament. Um, crippled guy. He just asked you a simple question. What's all this other? You brought everything, including the kitchen sink, into this, and it's just a simple question. what would you like me to do for you? Many of us miss the chance for wholeness because we want to cover up ourselves from his concern, from his loving acceptance and cover ourselves from his desire to help because, you know, just let me come in and put in my time. I'm so used to just coming and not actually getting in. I'm so used to standing but not really worshiping. I know some of the words, but I'm really not going to sing. I believe in the doctrine and the preaching, but I'm really not going to get it. You see, God doesn't look on the outward. He looks on the inward. And there are some desperately wounded people at Souls Harbor that you've gone through the motions and you've been faithful for 38 years and it looks like everything is unky dory but God's walking and saying, are you ready yet? Are you really ready? Are you ready to be healed? No, I'm fine. Coming to church for worship may be like Bethesda for some of us. We come here just as we are. Not coming for our wounds. We're coming just because it's right. I wonder if you could hear the recording of your last 20 conversations. If you would realize about yourself. How about just your last few prayers? That might be bleak for some. But I'll wait. That if you have the opportunity you would find a very distinct 
any possibly disturbing path. The problem is, and so many of us are more comfortable sheltering and hiding our old hurts and wounds. We trust we might be if we just didn't have them anymore. Talk about them, fall on them. So much so that we almost don't know if we'd be the who we're supposed to be without them. Like a coat. It's our badge of honor to have been wounded and to have been hurt. So we have our own company logo, wounded. Betrayed. Heated on. Your logo there. Be honest with yourself today. Yeah, I get it. I work for bitterness. If you come to church, most of the time half 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 heartedly, thinking that maybe healing we could sneak over into my pew and I not really have to say yeah something different. I come here because you know what? There's something greater than a pool and an angel. The healer's in the house. Mm. Mm. I, and I know I, I know this is difficult. I know this is awkward because there are some here that, you know, I really don't expect anything. I'll sing, but not with conviction. I'll amen the preaching, but I really, yeah, yeah. I'm amen and because somebody else needs to hear it. And you find your place physically, but you've never found your place spiritually. Like that guy, he's driving down the back road. He's traveling in Northern California, checking out the Redwoods, going and seeing the Glass Beach. And he gets, he's down this lonely road on one, Highway 1 going north. Been there, done it a thousand times. Gets a flat tire, looks up and down, looks at his watch. It's the middle of the night, and he sees a little light from a little house. His jack's broke. He's like, okay, I'll go see if this guy borrowed jack. And while he's walking, he's like, and then this guy's not going to want me to disturb him. I'm going to knock on this guy's door, and he's going to get mad. I just want to borrow his jack. I don't, I don't want to take it. I just want to borrow it. And he gets a little closer and, you know, he, he said, man, this guy's going to be upset if I knock on this door and all this. And, and and he finally gets the door and he knocks on the door. The guy answers the door and he said, keep your jack. I don't want it. Because he's so busy predetermining what kind of reaction he's going to get that he shuts it down when he gets there. And some of us come into the house of God while well, he may not hear me. Well, keep your healing, Jesus. I won't come forward. I believe you, but I won't trust you. Mm. That may seem pretty silly, but how many times does this actually affect us time after time where who's going to get healed today and we stand there asking the question wounded to the core? Bitterness, like a cancer eroding our faith, and we sit there next to our loved one, our spouse, our children, our family, or even alone with wounds that need to be healed day after day, month after month, year after year, and we build up an animosity in our minds towards everyone who's here to help us. We build an animosity. We despise the altar. I don't need an altar. I don't need to pray through. I don't need the Holy Ghost. I don't need ah, ah, Keep your jack, Jesus. Well, we're regulars, but we're not believers. Familiar faces. No one now around you knows your story. We know you're hurt. We've all seen your attitude, your opinions, heard the excuses. Why do you see when you step into the presence of God? Believe God to be healing. I know you've seen it all. You know it all. And you've experienced most everything except one thing. 
who watch and we look around and we see some young people and new people and they benefit from the stirring and the moving of the Holy Ghost on the other side of the sanctuary or the other people that come to the altar and watch as other people year after year get what you deep down know you need so bad. There are actually those who move forward towards wholeness and you almost become envious. What are you doing up there leading service? What are you doing up there singing? Why are you there? Who does he think he is up there preaching and teaching and doing youth and You didn't want healed. You didn't. You've been around it for years, but it was always for someone else. And then you turn around and someone else is doing a ministry you were called to because you wouldn't believe God could make you whole. He can heal your family, heal your home, bring your entire family under one roof. But you didn't believe God for an altar. You didn't believe God for you. Jesus saw this man in all the years of his jaded mentality. He'd probably been there the longest. He was probably the senior member. Jesus likes taking on the worst cases. If he'd have walked to the guy that had been there a week, it wouldn't have meant much. But you walk up to the guy that's been there almost 40 years, like, oh, God, he can't help that guy. I wonder if that's why Jesus singled them out. He's just like, give me the most stubborn case. I can show you what's possible. Let, let, let me get, see, see, see. That's why I get upset when people get mad at people that come in here with imperfections. It's like I said Wednesday night. You're putting Jesus' blood on trial. Uh-uh. I'm here to let Jesus' grace and mercy be on display. Watch what he can do with who's willing to come to an altar. Watch what he can do. Wait a minute. You're upset because someone's got a past? You ought to be excited because you did, and the same God that covered yours covered theirs. But you'd rather sit there and bitter and upset and complain about what God's doing. How can he use them the same reason, the way he used you? And Jesus says to him, take your bed, walk. What do you think went through that man's mind when Jesus said that to him? I've got an idea that maybe he was like, I should be pleased when I look at myself lately. Things are falling apart with age. But I imagine this guy looking and going, you know, my problem just met its match. My situation just met my savior. Body, you're going to give glory to God because we're getting up in this place. Because I'm not sitting here. I'm not wasting my time sitting here because I don't want you. I came here because I believe he's a healer. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I didn't come just to put on a suit and a tie. I came to get in the altar to put on Christ. And I want to be healed. I'm going to continue to believe him for it. And while we're all staring around, I can imagine as all them other people were sitting. Oh, my God. He's talking to Vinny. Vinny's been here 38 years. Vinny's impossible. Imagine the heart of his chest. He said, this is the one. I'm, I'm getting this one today. This is the one. Hmm. This, this guy, 38 years. That's more than twice the length of time you've been alive, Tia. This is the one that brought the dead to life. Deaf ears were open. Leprous bodies were healed. Blind eyes have been opened. This, the, the, 
the one, the worst one meets the best one. The worst one meets the right one. The, 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 the sinner meets the savior. The sick meets the healer. The very thing that we believe in, it's happening right now. The question is, will thou be made? <laughs> Jesus doesn't ignore our pain. I believe after 38 years, 38 years of a debilitating disease, he probably went ballistic. He probably went nuts. Thirty-eight years of feeling helpless, independent, embarrassed, abused, worthless, and frustrated. Only the enemy would be talking right now. At a moment's time, stood up and walked away from Bethesda. His physical condition was cured, and no doubt the wounds of his soul were healed. Maybe you didn't see it like I did, but. This incidence of healing was not simply a matter of making the man believe he could be better. Even though that was part of the situation. Listen, his healing came about because at some point he obviously wanted to be healed. I couldn't have been there. There are some here this morning that need to be made whole. You carry wounds, hurts, disappointments, anxiety, worry, things that you've accepted. But in order for this to happen, you have got to believe that the healing of your even old wounds is possible. Even those sensitive, painful ones carry for a long time. You have to come to the same understanding that this invalid for 38 years that the pool came to, and that is Jesus truly is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I know you can quote it. I know you can say it. But the issue today is you really need to believe it. But yet something else here is very important. You gotta want to be free. You gotta be willing to take the badge off, to lose that entire conversation, to let that entire dialogue die. And be willing to say, I'm going to walk in newness of life. I'm not going to talk about those 38 years. I want to talk about the next 38 years. I want to be set free from not only the physical, but the emotional baggage of the situation. I, I don't want to talk about being beaten down. I want to talk about being raised up. I, I don't want to wear pain like a badge. I want to put it behind me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you ready? Because you have got to give God permission to take it away. You got to give him permission. He's a gentleman. He doesn't shove the Holy Ghost down anybody's throat any more than a healing. Jesus saw him there. He knew that he had been out there a long time in that case and said unto him, will you, will you be made whole? It's on him. I will, I will to do it. But are you willing to change your lifestyle? Are you ready that instead of coming to the pool and being like you've See, that scares some of you. You don't know if you can be the person you, you, you should have been a long time ago. Well, I've been so long like this, I don't know if I can change. I'm just old school. This is the way I am. This is where I'm from. And that's where Jesus is like, okay. Your badge of honor will always be your badge of pain. Because you say you want to heal, but you're not willing to let go of it. So the question today is still alive. Will you be made whole today? He's asking, will you allow yourself to be healed? Are you willing to take your bed and go forward? Will you give Jesus permission to heal you today? Because let me say something. What good is a healed body and a hard heart? What good heals your body? Are 
Did you allow yourself to be made whole? How much do you want to be set free? Are you ready to let, here we go. Are you ready? Because I'm going to get worse. Are you ready to let the bitterness go? The complaint. Anybody got any scars? Scars are what? Proof of? So what is that bitterness? Bitterness is the unhealed wound in you. That sore that you continue to pick. That you've been God. And you let go of all that past, physically but emotionally. And you let it go with all your heart today. Can you allow God to not just touch your body, but heal your mind and your heart? Jesus didn't want to heal him, so we'd spend the next 38 years talking about the last 38 years. up take your bed go you don't belong here when i heal you and touch you i want you to go into all the world i want you to teach i want you to tell i want you to talk about the gloriousness of god i want you to allow your heart to be set free to let go of what happened to you to talk about what just happened to you Can you hear it? Can you hear his voice today? So I believe he's saying to someone this morning, I want to make you whole, but will you let me? See, 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 let me tell you what your mind, your heart, your spirit is Oh, it's just another Sunday. But I'm telling you right now, God wants to heal something. Are you ready for a, a restored life? A renewed mentality, a stirred up spirit, a new way of thinking and live. Are you ready to walk in the newness? Are you ready to say, you know what? Let old things be passed away and all things become new. Because you can't say that all things become new except my attitude. Some years ago, Hot summer day in Florida. There's a little boy decided to go swim in the old swimming hole behind his house. In a hurry to dive into that cool water, he started running out the back door, stripped off his shoes and socks and his shirt, and flew into that water, not realizing as he swam toward the middle of the lake, alligator was swimming towards the shore. His mother, viewing from the kitchen window, saw exactly what was going on and started screaming as loudly as she could. Momentarily distracted by his mom's voice, the voice the, the boy heard the sound and the, and the alarm in her voice. He made a U-turn and started swimming back. But just as he reached the shore, that alligator reached his legs. And at the same time, that alligator started to pull that little boy back in that pool. Mama had reached out and grabbed a hold of his arms. And right then and there became a vicious tug of war, a battle for the life of that little boy. And although the alligator was much stronger than the mother, the mother had a passion much stronger than the alligator. And at that moment, the neighboring farmer happened to be driving by, saw the commotion, grabbed the rifle out of his pickup truck and shot that alligator. That little boy spent months in the hospital, but he survived. Newspaper decided they wanted to interview the young kid. And they showed up. Can we, can we see the scars on your legs? He reached down and pulled up his pant legs and showed the horribly mangled legs of a little boy, permanently scarred. The wounds from an alligator. 
It was at that time that the reporter's attention was drawn to the unexpected scarring on his arms. He said, wait a minute, if the alligator got you by the legs, why are these horrible scars on your arms? He said, oh, I got great scars on my arms. I have these scars on my arms because mama wouldn't let go. <laughs> Many times we have scars because God will not let go. He is trying to get you to that place of healing and you've got to let him You know, I realized this today. Well, last night as I was getting ready, I've got so many more scars from doctors trying to fix me. <laughs> Wounds come. And all sorts of incidents in our lives in summer, as simple as a bicycle fall, a broken glass, automobile accident. Our body does have a wonderful way of trying to heal itself, and in doing so, <sighs> we might not have a good looking scar, but we're healed. <laughs> 